Right, just as before, I'm wetting the entire piece of paper there. Nice and shiny wet. You can see I've got my rather grubby palette there. Bit of the yellow. Again, I'm dropping that underneath the flowers. Yeah, that putting that yellow in it, it gives a nice bright area before you start, doesn't it? A sense of light. It does. And one of these things, when you've got these sort of flowers which are hanging, for want of a, a better word, it, it makes a nice composition because they are yeah. quite difficult to handle. It's not like doing a bunch of flowers in a vase. You need... Yeah, well, the wild roses, as you say, that they'd be on the hedgerow. That's right. Sort of cascading down. And you'd get little pockets of light sort of coming through, wouldn't you? Yeah, behind it, yeah, that's true. You can see I mixed up my purple now. This cardboard blue does give a really lovely purple. Mm. And it's a slightly stronger mixture, this, John, than what I initially put on. Yeah. If you don't do that, you get sort of runbacks, don't you? Which Yeah, the watermarks, yeah, as we've tried to point out before it's always better to use less water and more colour at this point stronger and stronger colour less water I'm trying to anticipate here where my lightest flowers are I'm putting some darks behind them so that they're going to stand out from the background mm. yeah, even at this early stage I can see that you're, you're aware of a shadow area and a light area and there we are it's dried out now Same technique as before, wetting each petal. Mm. Although the white flowers, you're painting the shadow in, you're painting a colour in first. This is a very, very weak um, scarlet in this case. Yeah. Just introducing a bit more scarlet into it. Now, unlike the camellia, these are a lighter pink overall, so I'm using more water in the initial. Mm wet into wet stage. They're more delicate aren't they? Yes they not, are. Yeah. So you use more delicate colour. Not as strong. You get some lovely variations in these flowers though. They, they vary from white to quite a dark pink so. Well I did do a bit of research because I'm not a flower painter myself and I, one of the books I read about wild roses was there's 36 different varieties. It's surprising it's quite amazing, isn't it? Isn't yes. It? Uh, just goes to show we should uh, observe the world a bit more and have a look at these things. Well, you're going a bit dark now. Yeah, I'm just picking out one petal from another. That's the scarlet with just a touch of the cobalt. That's right, yeah. They're yeah. still not as strong as the previous community. No, it's still not, more. No. You're just sort of putting in coloured water, really, isn't it? Yeah. starting to give shape. The thing is to block everything in quite loosely to start off with. I think sometimes we, we always try and get to the finished product a bit too quickly, don't we? And yeah, you, work it that's up right. <clears throat> yeah, mo most people when you're first starting is you want to put too much detail in too early. Whereas the first thing to do in this kind of painting is to block in the areas and then that way you can turn the the drawing from a, a, a diagram into some... or a, a a plan into something that's got a bit more body to it. Now the other thing, there was a bit of the initial yellow that drifted up into these and that will come through the colour as well because the scarlet's mm. fairly transparent there. Yeah, the warmth of the yellow you previously put on does have an effect on the other colours you paint over it. As you can see, John, this is typical throughout, just like in the previous painting. Yes. <clears throat> yep, it's going through and blocking in each individual petal.
typical throughout your wetting area and then putting it into that area and letting mm. it bleed in. Gradually strengthen your colours. So just working around each individual petal in a typical way? Yep, that's right. What I'm doing now is just painting in the centres yellow, slightly larger than the actual centre, because just like we were talking about in the buttercup previously, yeah. <coughs> you pick some of that yellow up around there. You use just a bit of burnt sienna just to uh, darken it in places. Yeah. It's just like a little semicircle on one side and you get a shadow side. On. working to those then with slightly darker green, the same sort of technique where you, you're wetting an area and then dropping the colour in again. Yeah, it's specifically putting in the light greens first and yeah. then darkening the greens by adding the cobalt blue to it. So that's cobalt blue and, and the, the yellow green. The whole thing at this stage is a general sort of blocked in area, you're not doing anything too specific. There's plenty of time to draw in at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. 